Hello, welcome to MJR RPG, a podcast for tabletop role-playing game reviews and replays, or it would be if I ever get around to making one of the latter again. The following review is for the Call of Cthulhu scenario Fish in a Barrel, written by Phil Anderson and Nick Holland, and the sixth title in Type 40's Seeds of Terror series. The first part of this review is largely spoiler-free for players and keepers, while the second portion spoils everything to give some extra advice for keepers. In short, Fish in a Barrel is one of my favorites of the Seeds of Terror series. It's a fantastic vertical slice of everything good about classic 1920s Call of Cthulhu in a tight little package, well recommended for any player group, whether experienced Call of Cthulhu investigators, TTRPG players coming from other systems, or entirely fresh-faced non-gamers. This is the first of the Seeds of Terror to be written by Phil Anderson, and the second with Nick Holland. In a lot of ways, the scenario feels like a greatest hits compilation of a classic 1920s Call of Cthulhu scenario. Prohibition and speakeasies, gangsters and tommy guns, cults and curses, all condensed into a tight three-hour scenario. It's a lot of material for only seven pages of text and stats, but it largely makes good use of its space, hinting at enough details to let keepers elaborate further. Like other Seeds of Terror, the scenario ramps up quickly, setting a ticking clock for the players to defuse. Unlike its peers up until now, though, Fish in a Barrel is not technically location-restricted, though by necessity of the ticking clock it largely is restricted to a few locations, giving it a uniquely open feel compared to its predecessors and indeed most of its successors. Story beats are still hit hard and fast, with little time or space for players to dawdle about unless a keeper really wants them to. As always, though few, the handles are well done and fit the scenario well, with a map and three appropriately grimy documents. The five pregen investigators are also my favorite across the series with fleshed out background details and varied occupation and skills. A linguist, scientist, artist, composer, and a radical accountant walk into a bar. There is one extra handout or keeper resource that would have been useful, but I'll get into that more in the spoilers. The climax requires some extra effort from the keeper, but not always in a negative sense, really. Beyond that, the scenario can largely be run as written, though I found myself wanting to expand it a bit more from time to time, as there are plenty of plot threads that could be tugged on a bit more. Next to Endless Light, Fish in a Barrel is my favorite of the series, and another scenario I keep in my back pocket in case of a sudden gaming opportunity pops up. Very highly recommended if you feel in need of a 1920s one-shot in a couple hours. If you're already convinced, you can find Fish in a Barrel on DriveThruRPG individually or in a bundle with the above-praised Endless Light and the High Altitude tickets, please. If you're a player, you should stop here. Otherwise, continue on for spoilers and keeper suggestions. With the exception of the final scene, Fish in a Barrel is fairly straightforward to run. The investigators start in a seedy speakeasy full of smoke, jazz, and booze. Each investigator is at the top of their respective field, having started excelling in various talents and starting to patronize this particular bar. While enjoying the bar's signature drink, the juice, they suffer a brief vision, and then find odd welts and marks on their bodies. Investigation the speakeasy follows, meaning with some gangster NPCs and the bar owner, poking through some documents and fighting a crab demon. Investigators discover where the juice comes from, and get the feeling they don't have much time to waste. Ideally, with the gangsters on their side, they head to a warehouse that distributes the juice. The warehouse is of course crawling with cultists, who soon begin a ritual that threatens to turn the investigators themselves into a portal. With the gangsters getting into a massive gunfight with a cultist, party has to rush through the hail of bullets to stop the cult leader before horrors from beyond escape into Chicago, doing god knows what to the investigators turned portal. There are plenty of places a keeper could buff up the scenario, but the only place that I found to have any issues with was the final scene at the warehouse. Unfortunately, no map is provided, leaving players that like to plan out their assaults hanging. For example, one of my groups immediately thought to go in a back door. Is there a back door? Maybe. There also isn't much in the way of mechanical advice on how to run the final scene, beyond that it takes six turns of movement to reach the cultist leader at the back of the warehouse. Given that different investigators have different move rates, and that an investigator can move five yards times their move rate if running at full tilt, this seems a bit off unless it's a massive 200 plus yard warehouse. I would have preferred a measurement in yards, then let the keeper decide how long it would take or how difficult it would be to shoot the lead cultist, if that's what an investigator decides to do possibly having obtained a gun from one of the gangsters. In my runs, I had the warehouse be about 100 yards long, maybe a little longer on occasion, but packed with crates and barrels, so the investigators couldn't get sight of the lead cultist until at about 30 yards, 
and an unobstructed shot until only 10 yards. And with all the obstacles, running full tilt through the warehouse would require not only a dodge, jump, climb, or hard dex roll to navigate the crates, but also a luck roll to avoid being hit by crossfire. Otherwise, investigators could move at normal move yards without making any rolls, or they could try a stealth roll to avoid being seen. Once at about 30 yards, or more if I wanted the scenario to come to a head sooner, the investigators would get a glimpse of the lead cultist, allowing anyone with a gun to take a shot with an extra penalty die. Or, if your group is like one of mine, they'll steal the truck parked in the warehouse and plow through the cultist, in which case I asked for a hard drive roll to get all the way through, otherwise the truck smashed halfway through the warehouse, then tips over on a barrel. My player, of course, got an extreme and just obliterated the cultist. Good fun. I also added a bit more detail to the gangsters, making one tall and skinny and with an ear-splittingly high voice, one short and fat with a rumbly, deep baritone, the last so plain no one could remember what he looked like or sounded like. The players also wanted the gangsters' guns, so I let them borrow or purchase pistols with an interpersonal, credit rating, or appearance roll or shotguns with hard successes. In the end fight, the cultists don't try to kill the investigators, as their bodies are forming portals anyways, so it doesn't matter too much how well armed the players are. If anything, letting them get distracted with gunning down cultists just makes things harder for them. Overall, Fish in a Barrel is one of the first seeds of terrors I turn to if the opportunity arises. Great pre-gen investigators, nice handouts, gritty setting, and a classic 1920s Prohibition era story all tied up in a compact package. Highly recommended. Again, you can find Fish in a Barrel on DriveThruRPG individually, or in a bundle with my favorite seed scenario, Endless Light, and Tickets, Please. Thank you for listening. As always, you can find the text version of this review on mjrrpg.com. Link in the show notes. And thank you to Crowd Chamber for use of their album, Cthulhu. Link to their YouTube and Bandcamp in the show notes as well. Until next time, have a good one. <laughs>